just want to uh, welcome everybody this afternoon. Appreciate you being here. Uh, just proud of our football team for uh, going on the road and, and uh, taking care of business. Um, a little sloppier than I would have liked for it to have been. Too many penalties, but uh, did have a lot of positives. I thought our kids competed hard, played really, really hard for each other. And, and uh, um, defensively, creating three takeaways is a big, big deal. So talk about after the game and go back and watch everything. Led to 17 points, which is huge. I didn't start as fast offensively in either half like we need to, so we have to address that. Um, but I uh, thought we continued to play well in the red zone, and uh, that's uh, a key element of our success as well. And uh, just being able to uh, get off the field defensively and get our offense in position to make plays. Uh, special teams were solid. Uh, on kickoff return, we didn't cover effectively. But uh, they have an excellent punter. And uh, does a great job of spraying that ball around. That was an issue for us a year ago. And, you know, to address that, we got the ball secured. And, and I thought that was important for field position and uh, just being able to do a great job with that. And Charles Campbell, you know, kicking three field goals. He got the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week, which congratulations to him. And uh, he's done a great job for us so far. But just really hats off to Coach Ciano, um, excellent football coach. And uh, um, really uh, – you see a big difference in the team since he's been there in a short time and uh, the way that they play. And so they, they'll do a great job moving forward. So a lot of respect for him and uh, knew it was going to be a tough challenge to go there and uh, find a way to, to keep, keep winning football games, you know? So, but I think uh, as we talk to our team, a lot of things to clean up, um, not uh, have not played our best football yet. Um, need to start getting some of these mistakes corrected, but I thought we made progress. And the things that we've addressed, continue to tackle well, continue to play really, really hard, uh, be more physical at point of attack, um, both sides of the football. I think defensively, that's improving. Offensively, we showed signs as well. Staying on our blocks, we'll see more of that. But uh, uh, things that we addressed and worked on this week, I thought the guys responded well. Once we dropped a few balls in the beginning, we caught the ball much better. That was probably the second half of the first quarter on. And uh, once Michael got in the rhythm, they gave him some time, and, and he did a great, great job. So um, encouraged by the way our guys responded after a, a big win week one and making sure we stayed locked in and focused. And, and uh, I thought the guys did a good job of that. And so uh, uh, just go here and we'll kind of list some of the guys from the game, just so you guys know. We, we go through and pick players of the game. And, and so offensive player of the game was Peyton Hendershot, a couple touchdowns, and just really blocked well. They had a complete game. Really made you know, challenged him to, to – um, step up after week one, and he sure did that. So really proud of Peyton. Uh, Jay Williams was our defensive player of the, of the game, but several guys were candidates for that. Uh, got another interception, tackled extremely well. Uh, just just played uh, really, really good. I thought, I thought um, Reese Taylor played. I told him I thought he played his best game as a Hoosier overall. Um, and uh, just really coming into his own as a corner in, in our program. Um, really proud of him. But Jalen was our player of the game defensively. And then special teams was Charles Campbell uh, with what he did with uh, all the PATs, which every point matters. You see that in every single game. You know, it's a very, very important part of what we're doing here with special teams. So proud of those guys. And also for our scouts, uh, the effort that they give us each every week. Um, defensive scout team player of the week was Demarche Lewis, very talented freshman that I see just continuing to get better every single week. Cam Williams did a really good job as well and continues to improve. Uh, Ryan Barnes was our offensive scout team player of the week and uh, just loved his effort, loved his unselfish mindset, uh, just the way he's helping his team get better every single day and what he's brought into that. And then special team scout was Joseph Daniels, uh, just another guy that continues to work hard, a high character young man, excellent student, um, does things right on and off the field and just gives our guys a great effort. Also had several guys, I want to mention some guys that, that uh, just – Overall, just playing hard in practice. Uh, Connor Hole, Carl Ray, Caleb Thomas, and Jeremy Boyd. Guys just uh, busting their tails for this team. Unselfish, living out LEO, and uh, helping us get better every single week. So that's what it's going to take. Uh, we're excited to welcome the Michigan Wolverines uh, to campus on Saturday for a noon kickoff. And a uh, ton of respect for Jim Harbaugh and, and uh, the kind of coach that he is and the kind of talent that they have on that football team and uh, one of the top programs in this country top 25 program and uh, we're going to have to uh, keep getting better every single time we take the field. So big challenge for us this week as we um, have a chance to 
you know, for opportunity number three. So I appreciate you guys and you have your questions. All right, Zach. You mentioned a couple uh, defensive backs there and it, it felt like you guys were able to mix coverages a lot, you know, maybe win just some one-on-one some -on -one battles that, that freed Coach Womack up to do kind of different things in the front. Just, I guess, what's the trust level at this point with that secondary when you, when you guys are game planning, knowing that maybe you don't have to give them a lot of help and, and that frees up linebackers or maybe even Russians to, to be a lot more sort of aggressive downhill? Yeah, that's really important for us. You know, you, you want to be multiple schematically. Um, and I think that's one thing we really try to, to become more of, you know, as a defense and uh, to take some less pressure off certain, you know, calls or techniques. I think that uh, with their ability to play man and zone uh, with both our safeties and our corners, uh, that's, uh, that's a super positive thing for us, you know, and uh, I just love the way they're tackling. Uh, I thought Monster, um, Devon Matthews, we call him Monster, but, but uh, man, I thought he played really, really well, um, tackled so well, he could cover, uh, big physical guy, he's got great range. Um, just uh, you know, Jamar Johnson, I know he's got a lot of notoriety for his interceptions. Uh, I thought he played his best game yet since he's been here on Saturday. And uh, just doing everything uh, that he's asked to do, played with discipline, disciplined eyes, very, you know, they did a lot of stuff now. I mean, they, there was you know, trick plays and you know, motion and empty and back and forth and quarterback runs and two quarterbacks in there at one time and just doing all sorts. I mean, they're doing a lot of things and a lot of movements and, and uh, uh, misdirection. And you can get your eyes in the wrong place really fast if you're, if you're not careful, not locked in. That's where I thought our guys, you know, even though I was disappointed our defense didn't finish um, and put them away in the fourth quarter like I thought we should, that's something we've addressed and, 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 and really work hard on. Um, but I did think that they did a really good job in the back end of being disciplined um, and being able to play, you know, multiple things to be able to protect us in some calls and be more aggressive in others. And so, uh, but you see how much we, you know, have brought those DBs and, and we continue to, that's just what we do. You know, we're an aggressive defense. And so but those guys give us that confidence to make those calls as you're alluding to. And I'm just really proud of them. And, and Coach Roman's done a great job you know, orchestrating all that and just kind of, um, you know, making it, uh, you know, into what it's becoming, you know, and, and I think that, uh, you know, Jason Jones and, and Brandon Shelby and uh, Casey Teagard and all three of those guys coach different positions within our secondary. So a um, big part of our defense, you know, it's a talented group and there's many of them there. I already mentioned a few, but uh, you know, Taiwan uh, made a couple of mistakes that he usually does not make. We also made some great, great plays. So, um, just proud of that group and, and their play is allowing us to, to keep uh, becoming a better defense every time we take the field. All right, John, then Peaks. Um, obviously, you talked about um, the reasons you believed in Nick Sheridan when you hired him. Uh, it's two games into him being the offensive coordinator. Obviously, he's going up against a guy, uh, Don, Don Brown, who's a big name in defensive coordinator circles. Um, what have you seen from Nick in terms of how he's managed things and how he's adjusted and, and kind of what would you say um, needs to improve or, or what can you still work on, I guess, going into the third game now? Yeah, I think he's done a really good job. You know, it's, it's always, you know, there's always growing pains through learning and, and doing something for the first time. And uh, I feel like that he's um, adapted, you know, made some, you know, did some things a little differently from week one to week two. Um, even from the first half to the second half, I thought we really did a good job adjusting. I uh, still want to make sure we, we find a way to start faster um, in each of those halves, but uh, just, just some subtle adjustments. And it's not a lot of times, it's not major things uh, that you're able to, to, you know, tweak or, you know, um, dial a certain direction, you know, at halftime or week to week. That is the difference. It's, it's oftentimes those small, subtle things. And it's, it's right. Play calling to me is it, it's an art. You know, it's not a science. Um, you can do all the study. You can do all the prep. You do all the, give all the data, you know, but just calling, knowing what to call, when to call it at the right time is, is a big part of this. And it's, you know, I've, as a, as a defensive play caller, you know, time, you get better, you know, and, and you learn and you, you know, but he's an extremely intelligent, super, super sharp, bright young man that, that uh, he will learn and adapt and grow each and every week, I believe and, and that's part of it. You know, that's why, you know, you, you hire guys like that that you know have 
have the talent. They just need the opportunity and, and then also just uh, the, I give them that, that freedom and leeway to be able to, to grow and learn. And, and we meet and we talk and we talked again last night, certain things. And, and so I just feel like that, uh, you know, it's just about, you know, continuing to find ways to stay on the field and get your playmakers of football. And that really what it comes down to offensively, you know, get those, the efficiency in the red zone is, is huge. We got to be better on third down. So that's not been an area that we've been good enough in right now. And want to see us continue to work on running the football better. Although we had some good runs and, and did some good things in the run game at key times, you know, but uh, you know, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of variables that go into it. And I, and I just thought we were a little sloppy, the penalties and the snap over the quarterbacks. Yeah, we haven't had one of those since I've been here that I can remember. Um, and those things don't happen very often. And uh, so that was, that really killed that drive and, and some penalties really set us back and, and uh, did not allow us to finish with more touchdowns. We still got points on those red zone trips, but we need, still need to continue to get more touchdowns. And so uh, that's really the key. So I, I just think as he continues to grow and, and uh, you need to develop trust in certain players as they, they prove that they're dependable, that they know where to line up, that they execute when they're called upon. I mean, that's a big deal. You know, and, and, and he develops that trust in them as a play caller and, and the quarterback develops that trust in them as, as receivers, tight ends, running backs. And, and you're going to catch the football, you know, and, and, eliminate those drops and so uh, that's just part of his growth and, and his leadership and I just think he does a tremendous job I sit in all those meetings you know especially we have a unit meeting which is a whole offense uh, the day after the game or it was the day after yesterday because of a little bit different schedule this week with, with the voting tomorrow and usually it's a day uh, after we uh, have an off day on Sunday and so but whenever we meet that first time just does a great job of teaching uh, from the game and, and using video and just really doing a great job of articulating the things that we need to address in, in the right way, in the right tone, um, accountability, toughness, and love, which is and just, you talk about your core values. Those core values don't just, you know, they don't just stick out there for, you know, recruiting purposes or when I talk to the public, it's how you function on a daily basis. And so to me, our meetings should reflect that. And how he leads the office should reflect that. How Coach Womack leads the defense should reflect that. And how Casey leads that especially it should reflect those core values and how we talk to our players and hold them accountable and in a very hard, tough way. It's, it's just wrapped up into uh, an understanding that it's out of love and what we want is all of us to be at our best. So I think he does a great job of that. And so I've been encouraged by that and I expect him to lead that way. And I think that's why he'll just, you'll see us continue to prove each week. All right, Pete, and Jim Coyle. Hey, Tom. Uh Couple quick questions. Uh, how, can you update the status of Miles uh, Marshall and, uh, and and David Allison, and talk what, about what happened with the onside kick uh, situation? Yeah. So the first two guys, hoping to uh, you know, don't know for sure. Usually by Wednesday we should know um, of their status. Sometimes it goes even into to Friday. But uh, hoping with these guys that we'll know after a couple of days of practice. We'll be practicing this evening, um, and then uh, we'll practice on Wednesday morning. So. That uh, to me is, uh, um, you know, still to be determined. Hopefully to get, hope, hope to get him back. And then uh, um, onside kick. You know, I tell you what, I thought they did a really good job. You know, we called timeout to try and show or to get a chance to see them show their hand at what they were going to do. Uh, they ended up in a very similar call that we expected, but they shifted four different times um, to get into that. And then, and we, I felt like the, we didn't get everybody in, in, in the perfect position um, still thought we should have had it. I, I think it's one of those where there's that ability for, uh, and, and Brian Fitzgerald was right there uh, to where do you let that, let it go to the second level guy, or do you go ahead and try and, and recover yourself? And, and for that tempo of the ball, I would like to have seen him just go get it, you know, and, and not let it get to the next level um, because it wasn't coming in. It didn't take that second. It took that first big hop, but it didn't, you know, to me, it should have been, I thought covered at that point. And, and we would have been able to get out of that whole, you know, scenario after that. So, but I did think that they, the, the shifting and the motioning, all that different things, that was uh, created some challenges for sure and to get guys in the right spot and getting in position. So, uh, and it was a mad, you know, scramble for the ball. And we had it, we looked to see on film, we had it, we thought two different times and it squirted it out. And uh, obviously they ended up getting it, you know. So, but those are things, you just got to keep working on them. You know, those are, we work on those every single week. We'll continue to work on those. Uh, but that's, once again, that's how you finish games, how you don't, you know, give them a chance offensively to put your defense in, in a bad spot. And uh, now they need to answer the call when that happens. But, uh, you know, they, uh, they executed it at a high level and uh, came up with it. All right, Jim, then Tom Brew. 
Actually, Mike set me up perfectly for that one. Coach, my, my question was about uh, special teams. Actually, we've had three straight games now, if you go back to the Gator Bowl, in which there was a play that could have greatly altered the game in Penn State. You had the, the kickoff, that uh, the field goal that barely missed. And, of course, I think there was a 15-yard flag on that onside kick this past week as well. Do you not have concerns with the special teams as you're going forward? Because as these games get tougher and it comes down to a critical play, that could be the one. Uh, there's no question. And, and I think that uh, when you get into, um, you know, week three of the season, you go against another top 25 football team, as you mentioned, in the last three games, it's all been uh, variables there on special teams. And, and we have to continue to make it a tremendous focus for us and, and continue to be, um, but you're right. I mean, and that's, that's whether it's a missed kick or, a, you know, uh, not covering an onside kick. And, and uh, those are things that we like I said, work on, on the, consistent basis and that will not change it will only intensify and uh but i think the thing too as those things that keep happening and keep working on the different things that you could possibly see um you know we just got to keep you know i think the more they happen in games the more chance we have to teach off of it, learn from it and keep getting better from it but yeah you're right and as these games are you're close and they're going to be this way and it's a uh, uh, it's part of competing at a high level is being able to function in special teams play. And, and we're doing a lot of good things in special teams. But as you mentioned, those are things. And then the, 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 to me, the unsportsmanlike penalty is just inexcusable. So those are things that we have to have to stop immediately. And, and uh, those guys involved in those will be you know, held accountable this week uh, because of it. And you just got to be able to keep your composure. No matter what they say or do to you, it don't matter. I don't care. You just walk away and go celebrate with your teammate, um, which is one of the situations where we – talking to them and not us and that's what we don't do and in that situation there it was just respond to what they did to us and so we just can't and uh we only we call those selfish penalties when that happens we have a high price to pay for that for our guys so can't happen we got to be uh moving forward in that area eliminate those mistakes so we can win these big games that we have coming up all right tom then rick bozich coach a couple of things about nick if you don't mind uh how much does his uh, sort of uh, quarterback mentality and being a quarterback in this league sort of help him so far, you think, in, in, in doing what he's doing? And then secondly, if you could, um, how do you feel the logistics have gone so far with him up in the box and the guys on the sidelines in regards to making everything run smoothly? In regards to him playing the position in this conference, I think that's a major benefit. I think just understanding – you know, what quarterback goes through when he started in this league um, and uh, prepared, you know, each and every week. And, and I, I just think those things are very, very valuable uh, to have, especially when you're young. Um, and so to me, that just gives even our own quarterbacks just that you know, sense of confidence of knowing that he's, he's walked a mile in their shoes, he's been in their position, he understands it. And also I think when you, play that position. I think it's kind of like being a linebacker calling the defense, you know, and that's my background is, is playing that position at linebacker. It's just a different understanding of how that position drives the whole side of that ball and being a quarterback and, and how that uh, you work with that position, you coach that position, you play that position, uh, you know how they think and, and uh, just being able to um, you know, relate and help them handle because that's one thing I think he does a really good job even you so you kind of mesh this into the other question about this communication with the staff and you know because he's in the press box you know he's not on the field down there with our quarterbacks and and but just does a great job getting them on headsets when it's necessary and, and talks them through what they need to be talked through and communicates one thing I really appreciate about Nate he's just he's just always steady you know I, I'm I'm not that way <laughs> I'm you know, I'm pretty high strung as you know so um, he's a good compliment for me in that regard. So um, just kind of just no matter what, just stays there and doesn't get flustered. Uh, whether we, you know, even if I'm getting getting on him about whatever, um, he just uh, stays locked in and, and does a great job of, of keeping calmness to the staff, and, and which, which is good. And, and, and you need that. And, it's, and the quarterbacks have to have that. So that, that's another thing that, that I think how he coaches the quarterbacks and how he manages those guys. And, and he gets he get after them when he needs to at the right time. But uh, I just think that that helps the communication piece. And, and we've got uh, you know, that staff's been together a lot, you know, and, and uh, ever since I've been head coach here, so it's going our fourth season together as that collective group for the most part has been, been together, you know, so the corridors guys without question. So coach Hiller has been here since the beginning, coach Hart, you know, and, uh, coach Hurd and all those guys, you know, and so coach Wright's new, you know, 
tight ends, but uh, just a lot of continuity with Nick and those, those, those four, four guys have all been here together. So just really think that helps and they kind of know each other well and, and know how each other thinks, you know, so which is a big reason why I made the decision that I made, you know, to promote him from within and, and give him this opportunity, you know, so I think that adds to the chemistry and the coordination of working together and solving problems and trying to help us score points. All right, Rick and Paul Gable. Yeah, Tom, uh, Indiana had only beaten Penn State once until this year. Uh, now you're going against a Michigan team. The record has been somewhere. It's been, it's been difficult for Indiana to beat Michigan. Is that just sports writer talk, or do you have to create uh, a belief in your team when you go against these, uh, quote, bigger name programs that have had tremendous amount of success against Indiana? Well, it's definitely sports writer talk. I mean, it's going to be talked about quite a bit. I mean, the record is what it is. You know, um, we uh, we talk about things pretty openly and honestly in our program. And uh, you know, this kind of, even in fall camp, have been challenging our guys about the way they think. I'm always a big believer in mindset. We talk about that all the time. But just more specifically, you know, um, talking about the past, not being predictive. And I don't, I don't believe it is unless you don't change what you do on a daily basis. And then it, then it will become predictive, you know? And so, but just to assume it's gonna be predictive just because it's always been that way um, is what, you know, people will talk about and they'll give the stats and, you know, it, the past is real, uh, but it's not predictive unless you uh, don't do something to change it. And so to me, that's you know, it's what you do next. We talk about that even as a, as a football team and, and, uh, and Coach Sheridan addressed it with the offense about that piece. and. And it's what you do next is the key. So you know, it'll, it'll be made, I'm sure, a big deal about in some ways. Um, we just use, choose to use all the things that, that are talked about in a, in a positive way to motivate and to lead us. But the bottom line is this is about us playing our best football. And to me, that's the focus. You know, we haven't done that yet. Um, I feel like that, uh, um, you know, we've had opportunities, you know, since I've been here against Michigan and, and haven't been able to finish those opportunities, much like the Penn State in the past. And so it's about, you know, like I've told our team again this morning, you know, it doesn't matter what I believe. I, I told them what I believe, uh, but it's what they believe and how are they going to prepare and they, ultimately how are they going to perform on game day? That's what matters. And so it's our preparation is going to be the key. Uh, we have to clean up the mistakes that we've made the last couple of weeks and keep getting better, execute at a very, very high level and we have to finish. And so to me, that's how you create the change you're looking for. And, and uh, you know, we're in a, position here that we, you know, I expected us to be in and, and uh, you know, talked about being in even the last couple of years. And so um, now it's here and we have to be able to continue to elevate uh, our focus, elevate our attention to detail, elevate our uh, preparation process, which is why our one word for this week is elevate. And so to me, that's what we have to be able to do to allow ourselves to um, create a different outcome that we've seen in the past. All right, Paul and Griffin. Hey, Coach, kind of follow up on that. You've talked uh, many times about how special this team is, how the culture has changed. And, you know, last year, eight wins. Uh, this year, you open up with a top 10, uh, with a win over a top 10 team. Can you put your finger on when the expectations change from wanting to win to expecting to win? How exciting is it to see the culture uh, change, not only inside your locker room, but also across the state and on a national landscape for you guys? Well, you know, I thought it started changing last season, um, without question. You know, I would say the first step was going on the road and winning at Maryland, um, you know, a game that uh, um, you know, came down to the final play, you know, where we had to be able to, to get a stop, you know, by six points uh, at that point. And uh, Reese Taylor got a huge interception to seal the win. And, uh, and then we went on and, and uh, played on the road again and found a way to win at Nebraska and then finished out the regular season with a big road win in overtime at Purdue. And, and to me, those, each one of those collective wins allowed us to start uh, changing uh, outcomes, you know, and, and you think about, you know, we'd won five uh, each of the, the previous two seasons, and then you say, okay, you take those five wins plus the three that we got that I just mentioned at Maryland, at Purdue, at Nebraska, those three road games and got, got us to eight, which, you know, dramatically changed the way our program was both viewed and the, you know, the way everything, you know, was just completely different. When you find a way to win those very games that we in the past had, had found a way not to win. 
you know, or had just fallen short. So to me, that's really what, and, and, and then once you start experiencing that, then it just starts growing, you know, and, and we still, we had adversity and we had different players in and out and, and injuries and challenges, just like we're having this year. And, and we'll have pretty much probably every year. That's what life's about. And so, but, but finding ways to finish those games. And, you know, we talk about that quite a bit, you know, so, and, and I just think then when you, you know, start experiencing it, then you start to say, okay, what's next? Well, next we wanted to be able to, you know, you know, be the top 25 team or be the top 10 team. And well, we did that week one. And so now you, you start experiencing. And so everything you've been talking about to your players uh, now changes from me saying it and me trying to convince them and create that belief in within them before it happens to now, we just did it. And so then they've experienced it. They experienced those games we mentioned from last year. They experienced the game we just talked, you know, had this week one against Penn State. And, uh, um, you know, bottom line is now, you know, that changes the way you think about the future and you start expecting to win those games instead of, you know, that proverbial, you know, waiting for something bad to happen. Now you're waiting for something good to happen because you expect something good to happen because of what you've experienced, you know, in the past. So I think that's where the change is created. So can you pinpoint say this was this one play or this one game? Probably not, but it was definitely a collection of those things I've just mentioned. And even the falling short at, uh, you know, in the Gator Bowl, I, I think those are variables that, that play into creating the change that you want and the, the change, you know, for it to be lasting change, you, you have to really <clears throat> structurally, you know, have things in place. And, you know, we just, we didn't finish in that game, you know, in the end of the 2000 or the 19, 2019 season there in, in, in Gainesville or in Jacksonville. So bottom line is, is that that to me is what this is about. And our guys are starting to experience it. And, and now you have to, you know, take it to the next level of the expectations as they are raised to be able to elevate your focus and change the detail and the way you prepare. All right, Griffin, then Zach. Coach, you just talked about that culture change, and now you guys are 13th in the country. You're continuing to build up the program. You know, where is it that you're, you're satisfied and you can say, you know, this, I have finally built the program to where I want it to be? Is there, is there a tangible goal or something you can pinpoint as, as you look towards the future? Oh, I don't think there's ever some where you say, oh, we've, hey, this is everything we ever wanted to, to do. Um, but obviously, you know, we've been very um, specific about wanting to build a football program that competes for big 10 championships. So we want to win the big 10. I mean, that's, that's the reality. And so to me, that's the most tangible thing um, that you can put out there, I guess. And so, but uh, bottom line is that, uh, you know, you have goals and you have a vision and you have a clear picture of where you want to be and you know, conviction driven leadership is based on the vision of perfection. And so we're chasing after that and uh, trying to do everything we can to, to elevate this program and, and uh, go into big 10. All right, Zach, and then we'll wrap up with Russ. Tom, uh, I know uh, we've asked this in, in a couple different ways. You talked about this in a couple different times, but with tomorrow actually being election day, I guess just what's the structure of this week for you? I know you've talked about how it's important for you that your whole team is registered to vote, and, and there, there's been both at the IU level and the Big Ten level, you know, kind of a push to be more civically involved this year. So what will, I guess, just the, the structure of this week look like for you guys with tomorrow obviously being a day off? Yeah, so it's it's different. So uh, tomorrow is our off day. You have one day that's off during a seven day period. So usually for us, that's Sunday for the players. So we brought them in on Sunday and, and had our guys lift. And we obviously got back late Saturday night. They came and lifted on Sunday, uh, watched the film with the coaches. Uh, we had team meeting, position meetings. We had special teams meetings on Sunday, and we were able to to go over the game, get that all wrapped up. And then I uh, brought them in this morning to do a team meeting to introduce um, Michigan and uh, to start the week off for them. And then had special teams meetings for that and some other things within position groups. And then uh, bringing them back tonight uh, for practice this evening, which is something we don't usually do. Uh, we usually um, have a walkthrough type period on a Monday. So, but uh, um, we will practice tonight. This will be our normal Tuesday practice will take place this evening. Um, and uh, then we will give them tomorrow off, which is a mandated um, day off from the NCAA. And so everybody in America will have this time. Uh, and uh, those that haven't voted yet will all go vote, and uh, I'll be one of those. And so, but a lot of our guys have already voted because this is not where they live, you know, so they 
I voted absentee. We did that whole process, had every one of our players registered, and they've all voted. One, so there's a handful that can vote tomorrow, and so coaches included. So just think it's a critical. It's part of our democracy. It's a it's a privilege and, and a responsibility to be a part of it, and we want to challenge our guys to to vote based on the principles and things that they believe in. We won't tell them how to vote, but but uh, uh, educate them on being a, an informed you know, part of this process. So I just think it's important and we want to make sure that they're doing everything you know, we can do to help encourage that. And, and that's what the NCAA is doing as well. And so, but because of that, that we know football activities on Tuesday, which is unusual, a uh, week of a game. And so we'll be meeting as a staff and getting everything prepared for that. And then we'll come back on Wednesday and have a normal Wednesday practice, and normal Thursday, normal Friday. So really up to the first three days are really where it's different. You just shift around your off day. And uh, so kind of a nice little change up in some ways, just because we've been on a little bit of routine, but, but uh, we have to adapt and, and we have, and I expect our guys to do a great job handling that. And we'll talk about even tonight about the importance of, of this and what it's about. And, and even just the importance of understanding that we all have different opinions and different views and different things. And we respect that from each other. And that's, that's what Leo is all about. All right, Ross, last one. Hey, Tom, I, I don't think there's many coaches in college football that, celebrate with their team after wins um, more than you do and kind of fun to watch from the outside just with all the unknowns of this season and not even knowing if you you know have a season have you been able to enjoy the the first couple of weeks here more than normal or are you so locked in that you know it is what it is we we've gotten two two nice wins here to start the year and and here we go for Michigan well, I've really tried to enjoy them. You know, I think life's too short, you know, and, and it's hard, you know, this, this has been hard process we've been through and you know, it's hard enough at this level to win football games and let alone when you have to do all the different things we have had to do and had to deal with leading up to these, these opportunities. And I think you also just feel blessed that you're able to play, you know, and, and every week's, uh, you know, not guaranteed. And we've seen what happened up in Wisconsin and how quickly it can, slip away and, and things can happen and, and uh, it's tough it's hard and, and it's just you know, we're, we're no different we're just you know one situation away from being in that same spot so I just think that uh, it's almost like you know that locker room after the game is is kind of the one time that it kind of feels back to normal you know uh, you know we ran out on the field at, at Rutgers and it was it was weird I'll be honest with you so there was nobody <laughs> in our half of the stadium you know no one the only ones we were running to were just the people that were on the field with us and the handful and nobody you know and, and you're just it's just different you know it's, now once the game starts it kind of feels you're just playing football you know and they got the piped in crowd noise and so it doesn't feel that different but boy that was that was unique i'm telling you and uh and then but after the game and that, that's where you're just like gosh you just yeah i, I want to enjoy our guys i mean that, that to me, that's part of, that's part of all of this. And if you can't enjoy it, we're missing, we're missing something here. I get it. You got, you know, we got to put it behind us and, and focus on the next opponent, but you know, that, that locker room and that trip home and, and those time, this time, yeah, it's a special, special memories you're building with your players and guys that you love so much, care about so much and, and invested so much into them. And I, yes, yeah, so we're going to enjoy this and, and, and celebrate together and hug on each other and, and we've all been tested, so, you know, we don't all, you know, we've just been screaming and yelling at each other, you know, for several hours. But uh, that's one beauty of having the, the consistent testing. I think that helps quite a bit, you know. So, but at the same time, you know, it's, it gives us a chance to really just enjoy, um, you know, special, special time. And, yeah, these wins are big now. They're hard. It's hard to win at this level. So, we're going to enjoy every one of them, and that's not going to change. Thanks, Tom. All right. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate you guys. Have an awesome day. Yeah, Leo.